Hi guys, welcome back to The Crafty Author. My name is Anissa, I am The Crafty Author. Welcome to my quilting room. Um, I am working on a rag quilt that is super messy and as you can see, I'm wearing most of it. Um, anyway, we are going to be making a cotton cuddle flannel <laughs> rag quilt for a baby. So it is super cute, but it is really, really messy because I am working with Cuddle and I wanted to show you how I handle um, the situation with Cuddle. So I'm gonna go ahead and just turn the camera on so you can see that. You can see that we're in a different area of my um, craft room. We are over at the AccuQuilt. Um, this is the industrial sized AccuQuilt. This is the AccuQuilt Studio 2. This one takes A much uh, sturdier, heavier. These take the wood um, dies for cutting. Um, this is what a lot of your quilt shops will use. Um, so this is what it looks like. We are using this to cut the cuddle and actually the whole rag quilt. It takes no time at all to do this. I am cutting two pieces at a time with the cuddle on this particular um, die. It is recommended to use only one, but I'm going to use two. It goes a lot faster. I'm going to show you how I do this. So the first thing that I do always, always, always when I'm working with cuddle or minky or even flannel or any kind of fabric that frays or makes a mess, I always have a lint roller. I think I probably own stock in these. You can get like multi-packs at um, Sam's Club and Costco. And that's where I buy mine. And so I always, always, always go through after each run and I just clean up my dye. This keeps it um, so that the fibers don't get down into your blades as much. They're still gonna get in there, but not like if you would just let them sit there. So we're just gonna clean this up after each use doing this. And now I'm ready to go ahead and do another um, run with the cuddle. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. All right, so my cuddle was purchased on a bolt. So I am just going to use this to measure here. And you could actually do this on your cutting table or however you wanted to prepare your fabric for this. But I just lay mine down on top of my die. And I don't want to waste fabric because this stuff's expensive. It's very stretchy as well, so you got to be careful. You don't want to stretch it too much. So I've laid that on top of my die. Sorry, my head's in the way here. I'm going to grab my good sewing scissors and I'm going to cut right here, which will be roughly right at the edge of where I need it to be here. Now this is how I do it. You can cut your fabric, um, like I said, beforehand. This is just how I tend to prepare mine. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that out of the way now. And just set this bolt aside. Okay, and now I'm going to adjust my, um, fabric onto my die here. And that looks pretty good. You want to make sure you've got it on there. We don't want that salvage in on there. Okay. And now I'm just going to kind of flatten this out just a bit. Get any wrinkles out of there that I possibly can. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut right along here. Oops. And then I'll set this piece just to the back here because we are going to use it. I'm gonna put my, my uh, cutting um, board on top. And that is, I believe, plexiglass. And I'm just going to do that. And then I'm going to just try and, no, I'm not going to try and do anything with that. 
I thought I was, but I'm not. Maybe if I push it back. There we go. I like to roll from that side, so I just roll it back so that it's in a position where I can set things up properly. And I'm gonna pull that off and it's gonna be messy. <laughs> and now we have two pieces of our cuddle cut and you can see how messy this is and why I'm wearing half of it. Um, you can also put this in a bag and shake it that helps get the fuzz. Once this is all done, I'm going to go through with my shop back and I'm going to clean up this whole area. But um, right now it's just kind of a mess because you can see how fuzzy and messy this really, really does get. But I wanted to show you this and how I cut this on the um, AccuQuilt. And so that is how you would do that. Are ready to start assembling our quilt. I'm going to just show you how to do a couple pieces and then I'm going to go off camera and finish it up. I have my 10 inch square um, piece of batting. This is scrap batting that I've had and I've had this cut for quite a while um, because I use a lot of this in my um, rag quilts anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one of our main pieces, which would be at the top. And then we're gonna pull one of our fuzzy pieces out of our bag, which is where I've had that is in my bag. Um, now this is a 12 by 12 inch cut. And as you can see, what was so great about the AccuQuilt and that die is that it already cuts the fringe for you. So there's no fringing. You don't have to cut that. You're, once you sew these together, you are done. You're gonna be done. So I like to use a little bit of 505 and I really like it for using Cuddles and Minky because Cuddle and Minky is very, very, very slippery to sew with. And so I just go ahead and put that in there like that. I put the scrim side down. So if your batting has any bumpy on it, like this one has a little bit, um, you put that down facing your backside. And then I just use a little bit of spray for the top. And then I sandwich my pieces in between. And I put them together. Now, this is what I was talking about, how this fabric can move and stretch. It has moved and stretched a little bit, as you can see. So now my, now I'm gonna flip it over and I'm just gonna push it around so that it all kind of lines up the same. So that is how you would do that one. Let me show you how to do the flannel piece. Now, since we're working with all the same color on the back, it's going to be, all of this is gonna be the, um, the cuddle on the back because we want this blanket to be super soft. It's for a baby girl. And she has a Harry Potter nursery, so that's exciting. I bet it's adorable. I wish I could see this nursery. Okay, so there's that one. And then here is our flannel piece. So I'm just gonna, same thing, spray it down just a little bit. And then I am going to just line that up. Flip it to make sure that everything is looking pretty good, and it is. And now we have our second piece done. Okay, now it is time for us to start sewing the quilted piece to our, our blocks. 
So all I do is I just take them and I am just going to sew an X on my block. So I'm gonna go one diagonal corner and then another diagonal corner. I like to chain piece these. A chain piece means um, you have a bunch of them lined up all at once and you just continually sew. But I wanna show you this one just for demonstration sake so you can see what it's gonna look like. You can also use decorative stitches doing this if you wanted to, but for this tutorial, we're just gonna use a straight stitch. Now, if I wanted to continue doing a chain piecing with this, I would just go ahead and grab another square and I would just start sewing it, just like I'm gonna do right here. All right, so I have finished sewing all of the squares for the main fabric. Now we're gonna start doing the flannel squares with the main, with the cuddle on back. So it's the same thing that we did before. We are now ready to start putting our blocks together. So. I have both my piles here and I am just going to grab one of my main pieces and then one of my flannel pieces, which will be in the center. And we are going to put them back sides facing each other. So you wanna line them up together. Make sure all of that fringe is hanging out because you don't wanna sew the fringe together if you're working with AccuQuilt fringe. If not, then you just sew yourself about a half inch to an inch seam. You wanna leave yourself enough room to be cutting um, your fringe. So, getting it started is really the toughest part. It's not even hard. It's just getting making sure that the fringe is in there on my part here, so I just want to make sure I'm not catching any fringe. Come on, get out of there. Okay, good to go. So I'm just going to start sewing um, about probably half an inch away from my fringe that's already there. I'm just going to start going. And I am using a walking foot for this. I highly recommend using one. You are th sewing through very thick layers. So you wanna make sure that you've got enough um, power to get through those. And then you can see here, that my fringe is already up and it's done. So this is what it looks like once you have the back sewn. Then we're gonna go ahead and attach another piece of our main fabric to this side because our quilt is three squares wide. So I'm working with 12 inch square and there's 15 pieces here. So I'm just gonna put them back sides together. And again, I want to make sure that I have none of my fringe hanging out here. Okay. So we now have one row that is sewn together like that. So I'm going to finish doing the rest of them and then I will show you how we attach these rows together. Okie dokie. So now we're ready to start assembling our rows together. So what you're going to need for putting rows together is you're going to want to have some straight pins. You're definitely going to be using them to hold the pieces together. And I find when working with rag quilts, it's much easier to use pins than it is to use these really cool little quilt clips. Um, it just doesn't hold it quite the way you need it to. 
So use the pins. Um, so here's how we do this. So you're gonna take, it, it's the same as when we did the, the blocks, putting those together. This is my bottom. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to lay this one face down, right side facing down. And then I will take my other one and I am going to place it wrong sides facing each other. So just like we did when we were working with our rows. The next thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that our corners are lined up because you want to make sure that you're even. And when you're working with fabric like this cuddle, it is really, really easy for it to move. So again, that's another reason for, for the pins. Now what I do is I like to take the seam on the bottom and push it to my right. And then I will take my seam up here at the top and push it to the left. You'll have to feel for that. I don't think I can actually show you because it's kind of a feeling type of thing, but you want to make sure that those seams are nesting and you will know once you have it. So just make sure that they kind of just intersect with each other there. I'm going to put a pin over here just to hold this in place because it's having a tendency to move just a tad. Okay, so we have our first seam put together. Now we're going to do that with this seam. So again, I take this seam that we've sewn, I push it to the right, and this top one I'm going to push to the left, and I'm going to lock them, which is also known as nesting. This will make sure that your blanket, your seams match up as best as they can. They're not, you can't always get it to match up perfect, but you can certainly get kind of close to that. So, and again, I'm just gonna pin on this side. I know you can't see it really, but I just put a pin there to kind of hold it. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna go and you're gonna sew it because we're ready to sew it. That's how you put the rows together. You will do that for all of the rows. Um, it gets a little bit tedious because they get, you know, kind of big depending on the size of your rag quilt. But that is how we do this. Okay, so we're on our last row. And I thought that I would show you because I get asked a lot about how you do this once these um, right quilts get big. It's the same concept as when we first started. So as you can see, I have all of these rows sewn. And this blanket is getting pretty big. And the bigger it gets, of course, the harder it is to work with. But that's with anything in quilting, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this, this row over that we have that we're going to be attaching. And we're going to treat it just like we did the rest of it. Only this time you're going to have a much larger piece here to contend with. But it's the same. So we just put wrong sides together, just like we did earlier. And I am going to use my pins again. And I'm just gonna pop a pin here to hold this in place. And then I'm going to push my bottom seam, this seam right here, push it to my right and I'm going to push my top seam to my left and I'm going to lock those seams also known as nesting and I'm going to put a pin in here to hold that in place to where I lock those seams.
All right, so I'm gonna show you the squiggle line that I was talking about, so you can see that right there. And that's what it looks like on the back side. So that is just the finishing touch. This is what it looks like. prior to being washed. So the ragging process really begins once the, once the quilt is washed. Here's what it looks like on the back. It turned out adorable. So I'm gonna go wash this and then once it's dried and everything, I will post a picture. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you would like to follow me on social media, the links are down below in the description box. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you would like to share it, that's great because sharing is caring. Don't forget to click that little bell. You'll get notified each and every time that I upload an awesomely cool new video and keep on crafting. All links to the Alcu quilt are down below in the description box. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.